Uh, hello, everybody. Let's just give it a few seconds here for people to, to join us. Um, so far, nobody's on yet. Let's just wait another uh, 10 seconds here. Uh, if you're joining us, this is Albert Einstein's uh, Facebook page. Thank you for watching. Uh, today is the 100th anniversary of Albert Einstein's Nobel Prize speech. We have a very special program for everyone uh, who's joining us. Uh, my name is Benjamin Cohen. I help run the Albert Einstein Facebook page, and I'm also the author of a new book called The Einstein Effect. And we are joined uh, by um, three very austere uh, people today. Uh, first, I want to introduce uh, Hanuk Goodfreund, Dr. Hanuk Goodfreund. He is the academic chair of the Albert Einstein Archives, which is based at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. So he's going to be able to give us some Great. He's one of the world's uh, best Einstein experts, so he can give us a lot of good information today. And we are also joined by Dr. Gary Berger and Michael DiRuggiero, who are the authors of a new coffee table book, which I highly recommend. It's called Einstein, The Man in His Mind. It's available wherever books are sold. And we're going to talk to them about the some of the rare photographs that uh, are, are in their book, and we'll show some of those rare photographs as well. I'm going to put in the comments section right now a link with more information about their book, Einstein, the Man in His Mind. So as I said at the beginning, today is the, today, July 11th, is the 100th anniversary, it's, uh, it's hard to believe, of Albert Einstein giving his Nobel Prize speech on uh, July 11th, 1923. Uh, so, Hanuk, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that speech. When when people who win Nobel Prizes, when they give speeches, is it for scientists or is it for a mass audience? No, it's uh, usually for the audience that is that is present. But uh -huh. there is a story uh, behind his Nobel Prize. Let me tell you something about that, and then I will go to the speech. Okay. Because the Nobel Prize certificate has the date. 1922 but in the text it says that it is given in 1921 now how did that happen yeah. in 1921 there was a big debate einstein was nominated but it was very controversial in those days there were also some anti-semitic undertones about relativity being Jewish science and so on and so on. So they decided in 1921 not to grant the Nobel Prize in physics at all. In 1922, they decided to give the Nobel Prize to Niels Bohr, who was Einstein's friend, but also they debated, disagreed on many things and the committee thought that it would be inappropriate to grant a Nobel Prize to Niels Bohr before Einstein. Uh -huh. So they remembered but one other thing. Today, it is common to share the prize. In those days, it was not done. It was always only one recipient. So they could not share it between the two of them. They remembered that they still have a slot in 1921. So they gave him the Nobel Prize in 1922 for 1921. And then he gave the speech in, in 1923. And he gave <laughs> the speech in 1923. Yeah. And he did not give it at the Nobel Prize ceremony of that year, because then he was in Japan. He went to Japan. Because in 1922, in June, the Jewish Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany was assassinated. We have evidence that Einstein was on their assassination list, and his friends advised him to disappear for several months. <laughs> Luckily, he had an invitation from Japan, and he spent these few months in Japan. So wow. this speech or this acceptance is not delivered at the official ceremony, but later given to him by the Swedish ambassador in Germany. Mm -hmm. So this is the background story. 
Yeah. And so he won the Nobel Prize. You know, many people are, are familiar with uh, the theory of relativity, E equals mc squared, but that's not what he won the Nobel Prize for. He won the Nobel Prize for the, the photoelectric effect. That's right? correct. Yeah. But in his acceptance speech, he did not even mention in one word the photoelectric effect. <laughs> he only talked about general relativity. Wow. And it's interesting. In his speech, he said his greatest achievement, this is his masterpiece, which already in 1919, one of its predictions was confirmed and he was a world star. So he talked about general relativity and the essence of his talk was that this is only a preliminary step. This is not a final theory. The next step would be a unification between the two known forces, known fields in those days, gravitation and electromagnetism. So that is the context of his speech. He also said that the next step will be a theory in which the particles like protons and electrons that were known will not be put in by hand, but would themselves be a consequence of a theory. Hmm. This is the speech. It's, this is uh, amazing that we're a uh, hundred years later to the exact day uh, that we are talking about it. So I will, well, obviously we'll talk about it a little more about the Nobel and um, you can actually tell us where the Nobel prize is right now, but don't tell us now. We'll get back to that. Let people, <laughs> let people wait for that. I want to bring into the conversation, Dr. Gary Berger in North Carolina and Michael DeRuggero in, in Manhattan. Uh, the two of them put together recently a, a coffee table book called uh, Einstein, the man in his mind. And, you know, there's so many books, you know, I have a book about Einstein. There's so many books about Einstein's. I'm curious, um, Gary or Michael, if one of you wants to start off by telling us why you decided to put this book uh, together. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a comment. Uh, basically, it was your idea, Gary, right? <laughs> it was my, yeah, my idea. I, uh, I uh, pushed Michael for uh, probably a couple of years before uh, he agreed to do this with me. Um, over the last 25 years or so, I had collected uh, a lot of photographs, particularly of Einstein, uh, as well as other materials. And uh, to me, this was a learning process. I'm not a physicist, I'm not a mathematician, uh, and I wanted to understand what Einstein's life was about and what relativity meant, what it really, uh, I wanted to understand the concepts. So uh, in that search, I collected these materials. They, to me, they were amazing. They made me feel like I actually might have known him. I mean, the photographs are so expressive and um, you can see in his face and his eyes, you get the impression of his ability to uh, think deeply. Um, you, there, there are so many amazing photographs. So anyway, I wanted to share this with other people. Uh, yeah. And that was the, uh, the basis of the book and to write it in a way that anybody uh, could understand. So uh, it's really, although I think there's a lot of original material in here that would be of interest to science historians and Einstein experts, uh, it's really written just for the general public to help other people uh, gain the understanding that I have so far uh, in my uh, desire to understand who Albert Einstein was, what he did, and you know why everything went when I started talking about him, you know, every day we read, uh, particularly like in astronomy news. Just the other day, uh, it was the background gravitational wave uh, from throughout the universe. These, uh, it's kind of like uh, it was described as a chorus or a symphony. Uh, 
you know, Einstein predicted these a hundred years ago. Uh, he predicted his, his thought, his creative thought uh, led to the eventual development of even the technology now that can confirm his theories like lasers. Uh, the laser interfer interferometer that, uh, you know, first detected uh, gravitational waves from the merger of black holes, which he himself, again, it was Einstein's theory that predicted these things. Yeah. The amazing thing about his Nobel Prize was the, uh, sometimes I would say malicious opposition to him as an individual and to his theory of relativity uh, and his theory of gravitation. Uh, he was attacked and denied the Nobel Prize for this. In fact, uh, to my knowledge, he's the only Nobel laureate whose award states what the prize was not for. They, they made a specific point of saying okay, we'll give you the prize for this photoelectric effect paper, but specifically it is not for relativity. I mean, this is so amazing that, you know, in our day, his ideas um, give us the basis of understanding the universe. Yeah. In his day, he was denied, he was, blocked, uh, you know, even his Nobel address became controversial uh, because it wasn't about the award motivation. It wasn't about the photoelectric effect. So there's even, uh, as I uh, have researched this uh, with some excellent references, by the way, uh, books by um, uh, Robert Mark Friedman, um, who's a science historian, uh, he wrote a book uh, called The Politics of Excellence mm -hmm. behind the Nobel Prize. And then a uh, Swedish author, Ant Elzinga, uh, wrote a book uh, just entitled Einstein's Nobel Address. And it becomes clear that um, even the lecture that he gave uh, was controversial. So Einstein in his day had a lot of, for political reasons, uh, for reasons of anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. uh, maybe for jealousy, you know, claims of who, who really developed these ideas. Uh, it led me to realize that the Nobel Academy and the Nobel Prize, which is so honored and thought to be uh, perhaps the pinnacle, you know, of recognition of scientific thought, um, you know, it's just people, ordinary people, even right. the <laughs> with their, you know, jealousies and prejudices. Oh, you've got your dog is great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, it's not, it, we would think, I always thought, of course, Einstein won a Nobel Prize. No problem. He was right. the greatest scientist, certainly, of the 20th century. And that was not the case at all. His, his life was a little more difficult than we might uh, picture it today. Yeah, there's a whole, you know, there was an anti-relativity campaign and, you know, his career was nearly derailed because of these people who were vehemently anti, you know, didn't, you know, uh, didn't want him to succeed. Uh, well, and you yeah. wrote, well, I just want to make one more comment. Uh, you wrote an excellent, a really thoughtful and excellent um, essay in the New York Times Um in which you kind of relate Einstein to our current uh, situation in which there's a large uh, anti-science right. movement. 
Um, and I remember what, what I thought was so important was, uh, you know, you wrote that Einstein, uh, you know, made it clear that uh, there are there are facts, there are universal truths, and they matter. So in some ways, we still face the same problems uh, and issues today that Einstein did. Yeah. Uh, I want to bring Michael into the conversation uh, with regards to this uh, book that you helped put together. Um, you're, you're in the rare book market, you rare photographs. What was surprising to you, you know, when you were putting this together? Were there some surprising documents, surprising photos of Einstein that you came across? Well, it's more about putting the collection together in general. The genesis of the book, which actually won me over finally, was Gary and I had a lot of, there was a lot of excitement in discovery when we would find things. And mm -hmm. and it would be, we'd be corresponding nearly every day, some emails, and we were learning, and it was learning with excitement. And And what I love about what I do is that we're dealing with primary source documents, you know, the real thing, you, you know, you can debate what people say, and then you see it written right in front of you in Einstein's handwriting. And, mm -hmm. and I love that. And, and we were discovering things too, that maybe hadn't been written about so much because, you know, they're, they're not as, as mainstream, but we see something in a letter, we see something in a paper, we see something in a photograph that really is here. And so we were, we were constantly excited about the collection, both of us. And that's, we wanted in the book, we wanted to kind of share that feeling of excitement. I mean, there were a lot of, a lot of photos in particular I had never seen before. And this one right here is one of my favorites. Oh, and wow. when I saw that, I mean, he looks like, this is not what you think of when you think of an Einstein photo. It's, oh, it's artistic. This is, a little this is in Life Mag, yeah, this is in Life Magazine. So it was actually more widely distributed than I thought because I hadn't seen it <clears throat> until I saw it in person. And Gary's copy of it is huge too. But there, there's so many, Gary likes to point out that some of them in the early photos, he looks like a rock star. You know, <laughs> he looks <laughs> like, like he, yeah. he, we have these images of him as the old, old disheveled man, but it's wonderful when you get to see him all throughout his life and you get yeah. an appreciation of, you know, the total human being. Yeah. Uh, so as we said at the top of the show here, uh, today is the 100th anniversary, July 11th, uh, 1923, is when Einstein gave his Nobel uh, lecture. Uh, Hanukh, you, are, you work at the Albert Einstein Archives. Uh, where is the, the Nobel Prize today? At the Hebrew University, uh -huh. at the Albert Einstein Archives, and from time to time, when we host visitors, mm -hmm. it is still, still not displayed for the general public, yeah. but soon it will be because now we are in a process of constructing an Einstein house in Jerusalem, a magnificent, iconic building where we will make it all accessible to the general public. Right That's now, you privileged who come to visit us can see it. So you mentioned this this uh, Einstein house. I know Einstein didn't like the word museum. Many people are calling it a museum, but Einstein we didn't like the word going, museum. We are not calling it a museum. But you see, an Einstein house in Jerusalem that conveys a certain warm message of identity and belonging. Museums right. are everywhere. Right. <laughs> The house right. Jerusalem is something special. That's and, what we call it. And it so, like a museum, yeah. because there will be exhibitions and be, and yeah. uh, so you mentioned it broke ground. I think just last month, uh, it's going to be house uh, eighty-five, around eighty-five thousand documents. It'll house Einstein's Nobel Prize. Some of the right, you have some of the original theory of relativity, his original notes on that as well. Well, we have, uh, look, the masterpiece, you know, the general theory of relativity that we have in his handwriting, wow. 46 pages. 46 pages. That's the most cherished document in the archives. Wow. And so that will be on display uh, when this yeah, Einstein you know, house there is There are always built. restrictions. Sure, with light. display yeah. everything. Yeah. We'll display the whole document, maybe two or three pages of that will be the originals. 
-huh. And then we will change them because exposure to light and, and all kinds of microclimate considerations limit our possibility to yeah. exhibit original documents, original right. paper for too long. And, and when it's complete, it will be, I think it will be the largest Einstein, I won't use the word museum, the largest Einstein, uh, you know, document place in the whole world, right? It, uh, right. it already right. is, even be before it is complete. <laughs> so is there a time frame? When, when do you think that will open to the general public? Well, the, the idea is we are working around the clock and the idea is to open it in 2025, which will mark the 100th anniversary of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And, and Einstein was a co-founder, right, of that, of that university? Einstein was a co-founder. That's why all the material is there. That yeah, was most, his wish. Most people associate Einstein with Princeton, uh, but in fact, as you point out, his, his archives are actually in, at the Hebrew University. That was as his last will and testament, yes. Uh -huh. Gary, I would like to make a, a, one anecdotal remark. Yes, please. Uh, since Gary uh, mentioned this anti-relativity movement in Germany, you also mentioned, uh, indeed, in, in Leipzig, there was a publishing house that specialized in publishing booklets against Einstein and against relativity. Mm -hmm. And one of those books, the title is 100 Authors Against Einstein, <laughs> to which Einstein responded, if I were wrong, one would be enough. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So, Gary, I'm fascinated by the, by you because you uh, seem to come to Einstein as just like the everyman, like all of us. You know, Hanoch is a physicist. Michael is in rare documents, but you seem to come to this this love, this passion, almost an obsession with Einstein. I'm curious where that where that stems from. Um. <clears throat> I don't know, you know, what, what it's like these days, but uh, back when I was in um, high school, um, we I took a physics course that was all classical physics. I didn't even, never heard about relativity in that course. Mm -hmm. uh, and in college, um, I... Uh, the only exposure I had to physics was I took a history of science course. And when we got to the, uh, and it was, you know, phenomenal. I mean, covering the greatest minds, you know, in the world, uh, Galileo could understand, you know, what he wrote about uh, Newton, more or less, you know, could understand that when it came to Einstein, uh, I just remember thinking, I don't really understand this. You know, when they would, uh, I think we didn't even get into general relativity. It was just, uh, you know, special relativity and uh, envisioning how rods would shorten and clocks would slow down and, you know, but I was pre-med and I didn't really bother too much. You know, I didn't worry about it. But somehow, decades later, uh, during a summer vacation, I read a book, bi Biography of Einstein, and I thought to myself, you know, I would like to understand what this, just not necessarily the mathematics exactly, but the concepts of what he discovered. Why is he so uh, well known? And... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's when I decided, uh, I began reading, you know, I was watching videos, um, and I thought, well, there is no better way than to go to the original source. And that's when uh, I started, you know, trying to collect materials about Einstein. So yeah. for me, yeah, it was just uh, one of those things i guess it had been lingering in the back of my mind for a long time um and then at some point in my life that uh, became important 
to me to understand it. And ever since then, I mean, every day uh, we read something in the news that again, you know, we're our, our modern life. I don't think any individual scientist had, has contributed more to what our science is currently doing than Einstein did. And yeah. I mean, this was all based on his creative thought. There were no instruments, you know, in his day that could, uh, this was part of the, the controversy over relativity. Um, you know, they didn't have the sensitivity of instruments that could uh, really test his theory uh, the way we do now. Mm -hmm. But um, so the more that I learn about him, the more fascinated I become and the more um, I would say, I mean, he's certainly a man that I hold in the highest veneration. I can't think of uh, any other individual that is more, um, fascinating and um, just someone to admire, you know, more than he yeah. was. To your point, uh, you know, there are there are people who are winning Nobel Prizes today, you know, nowadays. We had, I think it was 2016 or 2017, the physicist who won it uh, on um, gravitational waves, which is based on Einstein's theories. And there's probably a high likelihood that the the scientific breakthrough they had a few weeks ago about uh, black holes which was also based on einstein's research may win next year's you know nobel prize hanuk does that surprise you that people today are winning nobel prizes based on einstein's uh the foundational work he did look our universe uh, is a is an entity rich of phenomena object has a history of uh, 15 and a half billion years. Many things and many processes took place throughout that history. Mm -hmm. So it's not surprising that with the present progress in observational technology, we discover time and again new phenomena, some surprising. Last week, you mentioned uh, gravitational we, uh, gravitational waves. Last week there was an announcement of another, a new kind of gravitational wave from different sources than the previous ones that were discovered. Right. Now everything that we know about mm -hmm. the universe follows from that 46, from those 46 pages of that paper, the Einstein theory of relativity. Actually, Everything that we know follows from one line in that paper. And that is the gravitational field equation, equation number 53. So <laughs> if you, so this is amazing. That's what I show people. They don't have to understand physics to grasp mm -hmm. that everything that is announced, that we know, that we observe, that we think that we know, follows from that paper, even though the universe cosmology is not mentioned there. Only when he concluded this paper did Einstein realize that this theory of general relativity should and could be applied to the universe as a whole. Yeah. Michael, I was, we only have a few minutes left here. As we wrap up, Michael, you look at, you deal with historical stuff all the time. That's kind of your field. I'm wondering if you could, Tell us what your thoughts are on, you know, today we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of Einstein's Nobel speech. Do you think people 100 years from now uh, will still be talking about Einstein? Yeah, and it's interesting. I had a conversation about this the other day with a collector of 20th century physics and science and particularly about Einstein. And we were thinking that this material is still undervalued because it doesn't seem old enough. Like we look at Isaac Newton items like, oh, my goodness, that's incredible. This exists. But as Gary points out, you know, a lot of people were alive, are alive now when Einstein was alive. It doesn't feel right. that old yet. 
So I think there's going to be a time of collecting where this seems more antiquarian, more special. And, you know, again, we're a little too close to realize the magnitude of a lot of these, this material from a collecting standpoint. There's a lot of room to grow. Yes, and at 100 years, absolutely, of course. So, so you're saying if you have Einstein artifacts, hold on to them. They're going to be worth a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> or call me about them. <laughs> I, I, I want them. <laughs> All right. So uh, anyone have any final parting thoughts before we end? Uh, I just uh, have one thing I'd like to yes, circle back yeah, to. Uh, Haddock yeah. said. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, Haddock ahead, mentioned that, that Niels, Bohr, Niels Bohr won the 19, uh, 1922 Nobel Prize. And there's an exchange of letters that's really beautiful between Bohr and Einstein, where Bohr congratulates Einstein and also says how relieved he is that Einstein was given it for the year before because he would have been embarrassed to get it the year after. It's really, it's really wonderful. And Einstein's so flattered by that. So they're, even though they had such a argumentative relationship, they were really close and unbelievably mm -hmm. res respectful of each other. Uh -huh. Nice. Now, I what were you going to say? say a, word, yeah. a word about the book. Because yeah. it was a, really a great initiative and the result was magnificent. And uh, I wrote an introduction to that book and I expressed my, my views and my appreciation and my admiration and my sentiments there. But let me just tell you that the administration of the Hebrew University, as soon as the book appeared, they first bought 20 copies and they are giving it as a magnificent present to the most prestigious, prominent visitors that come to visit us. Uh -huh. and, and I should mention the proceeds from the book are donated to the Albert Einstein archives. Is that correct? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. correct. That's yeah. very noble. Yeah. Well, All right. Well, be, yeah, Gary? No, I'm just saying it will be exciting when the uh, Einstein house opens. Uh, I think that would be quite quite an experience. Yeah, right. I think we're all looking forward to that. Uh, well, you, well are, you are you are all invited to the opening. <laughs> we have yeah, a VIP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this has been a wonderful chat. Uh, again, today is the 100th anniversary, July 11th, 1923, of when Albert Einstein gave his uh, famous uh, speech, uh, Nobel Prize lecture. So we are reliving history today with Hanukh Goodfroin, the academic chair of the Albert Einstein Archives in Jerusalem, and Dr. Gary Berger and Michael DeRuggero, who just put together this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Albert Einstein coffee table book, uh, which I highly recommend, which is what we've been seeing in the video. And there's a link uh, where you can purchase that uh, in the comments section. And like we said, all proceeds uh, go to benefit the Albert Einstein Archives. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules. This has been a lot of fun. I know all of us could probably talk about Einstein uh, yeah. all day long. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Take care.